Hello, and welcome to this video on one of my favourite supercars of all time, the Lamborghini Aventador. Lamborghini often named their cars using the Spanish name for famous fighting bulls. Aventador was the name of a bull that earned the Trofeo de la Pena de la Modernidad for its courage in Spain's Saragossa Arena in 1993. Now, if you're a fan of the Aventador like me, you may be wondering how many models of this car did Lamborghini actually produce? Well, there were quite a few. I hope you enjoyed this video featuring all the different models I could find of the Aventador. But, if you find a model I didn't mention, please tell me in the comments. The Lamborghini Aventador can be divided into two generations, Generation 1 and Generation 2. And in Generation 1, there are three mini-generations, A, B and C. The Generation 1A cars were completely different to the Murcielago, the predecessor to the Aventador. Although Generation 1A cars were amazing, there were some challenges, and these were found in creating a car with a robust gearbox casing and adequate sealing of the case of the gearbox to avoid transmission fluid leaking out of it, causing an inconsistent gear change and gearbox failure. These gearboxes were often changed on recalls on the first Generation 1A cars. From my interview with a Lamborghini technician, who was honoured by being awarded the 7th most outstanding trainee from the factory. It seems the materials used in the head gasket of the engine block were also modified and the suspension was changed to make the car more compliant for road use. The wheel design featured on generation 1A and B cars was named the I Perione and incorporated the hexagonal motif. This hexagonal motif represents the molecular shape of the carbon atom, signifying Lamborghini's use of carbon fibre technology throughout the car. Carbon fibre was first introduced to Lamborghini by Horatio Bagani, who remortgaged his own home to buy an autoclave so that he could prove to Lamborghini that carbon fibre was the future of material science in performance sports cars. Mr. Bagani then took his autoclave with him when he left Lamborghini and started his own company. Mr. Bagani also designed the modifications to the 25th anniversary edition of the Lamborghini Kunta, but also he worked with a team to design the first ever completely carbon fibre car, the Kuntash Evolutione. And there's a famous photograph of the whole team standing around the car. Sadly, this car was destroyed in testing and has never been seen since. When Generation 1 B cars were produced between 2013 to 2016, Lamborghini had incorporated several modifications into the gearbox, engine, suspension and software, including the introduction of start-stop technology. Driving a Generation 1 B car is markedly different to driving a 1A car, especially due to the softer ride and smoother gear change. However, the Generation 1A cars, in some enthusiasts, opinion have a more throaty exhaust note. The wheel design on cars from 2014 onwards was named Dion, which resembled the legs of a spider. 
Whether this design was influenced by insects is not known. A Grigio Antares coloured version of the 2013 Aventador can be seen morphing into Lockdown, the bounty hunter from the movie Transformers The Age of Extinction, who is a very cool baddie. Both Generation 1A and 1B cars carried over the Variable Air Cooling System, or VAX, which was first introduced into the world by the Aventador's predecessor, the Murcielago. However, in these Generation 1A and 1B cars, the vents cannot be displayed in the open position when the driver chooses. They only open when the temperature of the engine is about to exceed a specified limit. Generation 1C of the Aventador introduced the Super Veloce version of the Aventador, super fast, called the LP750-4. This had 50 more horsepower than the original Aventador, with aggressive styling on the front splitter and rear diffuser, and an outrageously sculpted aggressive rear wing to increase downforce. The car was lighter and came now with the introduction of magneto rheological damping. There is some crossover between the start of Generation 1C and Generation 1B cars, as the SV Coupe was produced between 2015 to 2017, of which 600 were made, followed by 500 Aventador SV Roadsters between 2016 and 2017. The wheel design of these cars was named Dianthus and is still offered on Generation 2 cars with an elegant, complex, multi-spoke design. This also saw the introduction of the center locking wheel nuts which were first used on a road production Lamborghini in the Miura. The air vents on the rear haunches of the Aventador were then redesigned as fixed openings maximizing engine cooling. Analysis, apex perfected, drift control, max output reached. Another hundred of a second, shed. Lamborghini released quite a few first generation special editions. The rarest of the special editions was the Aventador J. Only one Aventador J was made. I was lucky enough to see this car when it was presented at the Geneva Motor Show in 2012. Rumour has it that a collector nagged and begged Lamborghini to sell this car so that they could add it to their collection. Lamborghini relented and sold the car to the collector and it has never been seen by the public since. Some of the design elements were later introduced into the SV models, including the design of the front splitter. The next special edition from the first generation cars paid homage to the Mura. These cars featured no performance upgrades, but they were finished in a special complex paint scheme, which was two-tone commemorating the 18 different production colours of the Miura. Also, one of the things I adore about this car is that it maintains the black engine cover louvers, which were part of the Miura design. The next Aventador first generation special edition is the Dreamliner. This celebrated the relationship between Lamborghini and Boeing Aerospace. Another special edition can be seen driving amongst the aeroplanes at Bologna Airport. This was the Bologna Airport car. This airport car guides passenger aircraft back to their parking space. The 50th Anniversario. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of the year that Ferruccio Lamborghini founded his company in 1963, Lamborghini marked this milestone by releasing in 2013 the Aventador 50th Anniversario. Now this car did have performance upgrades, including 20 more horsepower than the LP700-4 and a new front splitter and rear diffuser design. This was given the designation LP720-4.
The most common colour that is seen in the Pirelli livery is white, but other colours such as grey and red and even black were available. Regardless of the question of whether this is a special edition or an ad personum special livery, the Pirelli edition cars look stunning and are reminiscent of the Bicolore Gallardo paint schemes. A very important car and an amazing car to see in the flesh is the Vedino, named after the fastest and most fearsome bull bred from Don Riera's bull farm in Spain. This car is the fastest and actually aspirated production Lamborghini, homologated for road use and has a top speed of 220 miles per hour. Five coupés were made. One of the coupés was kept for testing by the factory. The second of the five cars was placed in the museum and the following three cars were then sold to Lamborghini collectors who had been invited to buy them. Each of the three cars has the trim on the outer edge painted in one of the three colours representing the Italian flag. The last special edition of the Aventador Generation 1 cars celebrated Ferruccio Lamborghini's birthday had he been 100 years old. This car was called the Centenario. This car premiered several patented technologies into the future production models including rear wheel steering, first seen in the Honda Accord in the 1980s, a large touchscreen centre console now seen in the Huracan Evo and Lamborghini Active Vehicle Dynamics LDVA subsequently introduced into the Aventador S. There were radically improved aerodynamics and a fully exposed carbon fibre body. It is a car which pictures do not do justice to the fantastical design and sheer magnificence of what Sensorus Dile have achieved. This car has to be seen in the flesh. And I have been honoured to see two versions of this car whilst visiting the museum in Bologna. It is slightly wider than the standard Aventador and has scoops and grooves that are mesmerising. The Centenario had its own special team on the production line which looked after it and I've seen this car being built which was a real privilege. 20 coupe versions and 20 roadsters were produced. The car had a starring role in the film Transformers The Last Night. Not wanting the myth of the flamboyant Italian playboy to die with political correctness, the Centenario Transformer was charming saving the beautiful damsel in distress whilst giving her the ride of her life. These star appearances, combined with the ability to race the special editions of the Aventador in computer games, has brought these cars to life for a new generation of moviegoers and gamers alike.
Generation 2 of the Aventador production started with a modified version of the original Aventador called the Aventador S. The Aventador S started production in 2017 and was given the designation LP740-4. This car integrated the rear wheel steering from the Centenario and a fourth driver mode termed in true Lamborghini self-parody as the Ego mode. Imagine there was a way to amplify your senses. Imagine that every sensation you feel was always the strongest, the fullest. Sensations so powerful, they elevate yourself. This allowed the driver to independently enjoy a ride with the softer suspension settings of Strada, but with a more lively gear change, throttle response and a cracking exhaust note. Styling changes on the Aventador S were all functional, including a new front splitter, inspired by the shape of a snake's mouth, with the diagonal aero dividers in the bumper diverting air into the brake cooling ducts, resembling the fangs of the snake. The exhaust was redesigned with the shape resembling the three rocket thrusters on the rear of the space shuttle, with titanium chosen as the material of the exhaust to make it lighter and sound more fruity. Marcello Gandini's trapezoid design of the rear wheel arch, first showcased in the Kuntash prototype, was reintroduced in the design of the rear wheel arches of the Aventador S giving the car some continuity with its elder siblings. The Aventador S Roadster entered production within the year of the coupe version being released.
the Aventador SVJ. In 2018, Lamborghini set the Nürburgring that record with their next production car, the Aventador Super Veloce Jota, or SVJ for short. Jota or Yota was the term used by a Lamborghini for cars made for racing. This was the most hardcore version of the Aventador. of the Aventador had introduced new technological developments gradually, the SVJ had everything that Lamborghini could throw at it. With all the research and development from the preceding models of the Aventador, the SVJ included the second updated version of their active aerodynamic system, rear wheel steering, the Ego driving mode first featured in the Aventador S, magneto rheological suspension for all four wheels, 70 more horsepower than the first generation LP700-4, a carbon fibre diet leading to weight loss, large side air intakes to cool the radiators, an engine cover utilising motifs from the Veneno and a beautifully sculpted rear wing which worked with a revised front splitter and rear diffuser to increase downforce. The Aventador SVJ will go down in automotive history as a true technological marvel and despite the price being close to half a million pounds sterling the price still undercut the hypercar competition by being a third of the price of these cars yet matching their performance. Surprisingly, more Aventador SVJ models will be made than Aventador SV models. Allocations were made for 900 SVJ coupes and 800 roasters. There were two wheel designs for the SVJ, Nerio and Lirion. I've wondered where Lamborghini comes up for the names of the wheels, which don't seem bull related. To celebrate the loyal customer fan base in Japan, Lamborghini offered five special edition Aventador S Roadster cars with complex paint schemes that morphed through three colours from the front to the middle to the rear of the car. These cars represented five elements in Japanese culture. Earth, wind, fire, sky and water.
This Goodwood edition was a coupe version of the Aventador S painted in matte grey with orange highlights. Only one of these cars was made and I was lucky to view the car at Goodwood and also when it was being stored at Lamborghini Birmingham in the United Kingdom. Skylar Gray is an American street artist who collaborated with Lamborghini to paint an Aventador S with a collage of icons celebrating the themes, motifs and philosophies now ingrained in Lamborghini's history. My artwork is, is built off of the imperfections and showing the beauty within what is imperfect. Lamborghini is a company that, that thrives off of perfection. So when making this car, we had to come up with a piece of art that was perfectly imperfect. I feel like when you look at this car, this is Skylar Gray, and this is Lamborghini, all in one. This car has different paint schemes on both the sides and also the top of the car, and there is only one of these cars. The car was presented at Monterey Car Week, and is the first street-legal work of art on four wheels. It was sold to an art collector, and like other one-off Lamborghinis, has not been seen by the public since. As if the SVJ was not hardcore enough or exclusive enough for one potential SVJ owner, they wanted their SVJ to be even more special, and worked with Squadra Corse, the racing car division of Lamborghini, to produce a one-off version of the SVJ, called the SC for Squadra Corse, 1 because there's only one of these, 18 because the car came out in 2018, although it was officially presented at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in 2019, and Alston, as that was the name of the owner's son, SC118 Alston. This was the first one-off car from Squadra Corsa, the racing division of Lamborghini, and incorporated a sense of styling reminiscent to the love child of Sesto Elemento and Venino, with the SVJ acting as master of ceremonies. The carbon fibre body is in a colour called Grigio Daytona, quite fitting for the name of this channel. To celebrate the year of the origin of Lamborghini in 1963, 63 Aventador SVJ Roadsters are being produced in addition to the standard 800 SVJ Roadsters with a special paint scheme to celebrate this important year. These cars do not have any performance upgrades, however the paint schemes are technologically difficult to produce and require hundreds of hours of labour and they look stunning. Another special edition of the Aventador looks forward to the time when the naturally aspirated V12 will cease to exist. Even Lamborghini, the rebellious rock and roll outsider, cannot make cars without getting tangled up in the geopolitical realms of global warming. The Scion FKP37 is the first production hybrid car by Lamborghini. Scion means electrical bolt or lightning strike in the Bolognese dialect, and FKP stands for Ferdinand Pieck, the head of the VW group who acquired Lamborghini in 1998. I don't know what the K stands for in FKP, and I don't know what the 37 stands for. However, Lamborghini have previously produced a concept hybrid car called the Asteria, which was beautiful, but they never went into production. Mm -hmm. 
One of the main reasons Lamborghini could not base the Aventador around the Bizzarini designed V12 and chose to completely redesign the engine of the Aventador was because a future-proof platform was needed which could incorporate hybridization. If you look closely at the Scion, you will see that it pays homage to several other models of Lamborghinis. Looking at the rear intake scoots behind the doors, you'll see that these resemble the Mura. Also, if you look at the front bonnet and the way the lines follow the front bonnet, you'll see that it pays homage to the original Countach prototype, the LP500, as this also has a regressed centre section, which was later redesigned for the first production Countach, the LP400, now known as the Periscopio. One thing is for sure, the Aventador remains one of the most beautiful, breathtaking cars ever made. And every model brings a different interpretation to this naturally aspirated V12 icon. Well done Lamborghini. Thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye for now.